and let them come across the word of the Lord. Just know that that day the Lord has something to reach out to me. So don't just try to hear what the man of God is about to say, but turn your heart and connect to the altars of the throne of grace in order to receive from the throne of grace. The Bible says, let he that come, let him believe that God exists. And by that belief, life will be transformed. Number four, now listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Number four, seek comfort, prayer, and help from friends and the family of believers. I will take it slowly. Seek comfort. The righteous now in the midst of affliction. Seek comfort, comma, prayer, and help from godly friends and from the family of believers. This is, you can start this because it is a very major secret to overcoming afflictions. Seek comfort, prayers, and help from friends and the family of believers. In Acts chapter 4, when we read from verse 21, please give us Acts chapter 4 and verse 21. Remember when Peter and John were threatened as a result of the man at Get Beautiful who had been healed? So when they had further threatened them, it says they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Next verse. It says, for the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. 23. And being let go, they went to their own company. Everybody said their own company. So they had a larger community of believers where they could resort to, to find company. The Bible says, and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had done. And together as a company, verse 24 now, the Bible says, when they heard the company, they lifted their voice. Say they. Not just the one person. He came to a company of believers and they could find comfort. They could pray together. They lifted up their voice unto God with one accord. Listen, many believers do not survive afflictions and tragedies and negative situations because they lack these four points. Many believers do not have a larger company of friends and like-minded believers. Did you know it is a terrible thing for a believer to not be connected to a larger body of believers? Because when, when disaster strikes like this, no matter how powerful you are, you will need the company of believers to shield you and encourage you. There are times the sermon you hear will not come from yourself. It will come from someone else speaking to you. Are we learning? First Thessalonians 5 and verse 25. It said, brethren, pray for us. There are times that as much as you may want to pray for yourself, you may not have that energy. But there should be some brethren that you can honestly say pray for us. Even though we are apostles, do you have the brethren that can pray for you? Do you have the brethren that can love you, that can come and shield you? Hallelujah. Philippians 1.19. Philippians 1.19. For I know, Paul is speaking, that this shall turn to my salvation. How? Through your prayer. Paul, the prayer warrior, is saying, I require the prayer and the shield of other believers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. For this fourth point, I wrote something very interesting here, and I please want you to listen. I said, living an isolated Christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity. Living an isolated Christian life. Hallelujah. An isolated Christian life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, when you read from verse 9 to 12, it talks about the power of unity. Two are better than one, it says, because they have a good reward for their labor. Reading to verse 12. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he had not another to help him up. 
It says, and again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12 now, it says, and if one prevail against him, it says, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Living an isolated Christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity. Can I tell you? Having brethren, having godly friends, and having a family of believers who love you and know you and support you will require you sowing seeds of love, sowing seeds of care, and sowing seeds of help to believers too. You have to make those investments waiting for these days. Now, let me tell you the truth. The proof of your being connected to a spiritual family is not attendance, it's genuine connection connection that is proven by service and your own impute also attendance does not mean you have a spiritual family have you registered your impact by registering your love by registering your care who knows you are there who has been a beneficiary of your kindness there are many people who attend believer meetings, but nobody knows them enough to come and knock on their door and say, I heard that you have been crying for the past two days. You have blessed me too much. I will not leave this place. Your home is my home. Your tears is my tears. Let me tell you, woe betides a man who has not spent his life investing and sowing seeds of love, seeds of kindness, because you will find, do you know, there are believers who go through pain and they go through it alone because they have not made any commitment to anyone nor any spiritual family enough no track record of service no track record of giving no track record of prayer no track record of support they just freelance participation unfortunately for those people who are betides that believer do you know there are many believers who have cheaply come out of affliction because of the power of a larger body of believers why is your face gloomy like this? I've not been able to pay my rent. I'm not an irresponsible person. It's just that things have been happening in my life. How much is the rent? Ah, I'm even afraid to say it. It's 1.5 million. And you may not even know the person you are talking to. He will say, come and see me tomorrow. You thought he would give you rent. He will give you the key of a house and say, I have watched you. Every time when it's time to collect offering, I see your service in the house of God. I, you always have that smile, that glow when people are sad. I've taught you that challenges are as large as the ignorance of the victims. You see, invest in strategic relationships. There are many of you who will not call on anybody. When you hear that people are sick, it's none of your business. When you hear that someone is in trouble, it's none of, once it does not affect you, it is none of your business. No. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. And you'll be making investments and you will be surprised. Moments where you need help, the body will come and wrap their hands around you and say, no, let that sword pierce us instead of touching you. You have made too much commitment. There was a woman in the Bible, you remember? That some, a woman who died in the Bible and people came and said, look at what she, this woman cannot die. Who will continue doing this? Can I tell you, you can prolong your life using your kindness and benevolence. Your contribution to the program of God can be so significant. God will not allow any devil to take your life. Are we together? This will require you sowing seeds of love, sowing seeds of care, sowing seeds of help to many believers matthew chapter 5 and verse 7 it says blessed are the merciful jesus was teaching he says for they shall obtain mercy galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 there is such a concept as the household of faith it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men. Say, do good to all men. Then it says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Can I tell you, you have heard me say it, but let me repeat it. If your absence is not missed, it means that your presence was not contributing much. 
you know that you are an active contributor to the program of God because people should be able to detect your absence. Where is that lady who always smiles on Sunday, whose glow can even, if you are sad and you look at that lady, where is she? And someone says she lost her mom. He said, well, I don't know her, but let me know where, can I send something to that lady? Believers are quick to wrap their hands around people who become active contributors to the growth of others. There are others, listen to what I'm telling you. This is very powerful. It is a terrible thing to not have a friend, to not have somebody who loves you and believes in you, who can cry. You see believers go through situations alone. No. Let me repeat number four again for emphasis. Seek comfort, prayers, and help from godly friends and then from the family of believers. It's a culture in this ministry to make sure that all who are genuinely connected to this ministry as much as possible are shown the care and the love that is needed as much as God can grant us grace to do. I do not believe in using people. I believe in people being blessed. And for as long as God grants us the grace, we'll continue to extend hands of love and benevolence all wise as much as God grants us grace. Hallelujah. Growing up, I used to wonder why our parents and elderly people, every wedding you see them there, every burial. And you are wondering, what, is it that you know everybody? They return back and they say, I'm traveling somewhere. Who is getting married again? Uh, one woman like this, I used to know her in 1971. I heard that her last one is getting married. And that's why you are traveling to the south. They return back. They are moving from pillar to post. And in our foolishness as children, we thought they were just wasting time. Can I tell you, you know how much you are invest, you've invested in people because like Gideon, when you blow that trumpet, 33,000 people should show up. Why are you crying? My child has not been able to go to school. No, not under my watch. Please allow this. I will leave this child's education to me. I remember when I was in primary school. I remember you were there for me. Can I tell you the truth? The law of seed time and harvest works powerfully. Powerfully. There are many today. Your carelessness of yesterday has become a padlock to your destiny. It locked your destiny and threw the key away. That every time you want to move the memories of your carelessness of yesteryears, I'm praying in this service in the name of Jesus that the God of all mercy will show someone mercy. Yeah. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Yeah. The body of believers. Don't just be an attendant. Be connected genuinely in truth. There is always something that you can do to add to the smiles of believers and build quality, godly relationships. How do you do that? By being friendly, I have taught you, and by being an active contributor to the growth of people. Practice the law of honor. Don't downplay and demean people and expect them to invest their time and attention during the days of adversity. No, people will reciprocate based on their perception of who they think you are. Are we together? This is very, very important. As tired as I can be sometimes, there are people, if I see their call and I, I see their text, I will make efforts to get up and respond. Why? Because I love everybody. But the truth is that their participation and their contribution in my life is not at the same level. Are we together now? Yes. What investments are you making now for those days? Man of God, does somebody believe in you enough to say I will never watch you in shame? No matter what it is, I will come and wrap my arms around you and make sure that I stand by you to see that this rent issue or this financial issue gets out of the way. Can I tell you, depending on yourself by yourself to come out of affliction and challenges may end up burying you there. Sometimes you will need, even if you are Jesus, you will need Simon of Cyrene to help you carry that cross to Golgotha. And woe betides even a savior who does not have help. Is someone learning? Build godly relationships. Be kind. Be loving. Don't just be anointed. Don't just be a prayer warrior. Don't just be a word giant. 
in the face of affliction people do not care i have taught you people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care people will not come to help you just because you're a prayer giant just because you're a word giant sometimes it's that sense of compassion and honor and empathy and you will be surprised how people will arise to come to your rescue may you never lack helpers I'm prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus Christ may you never lack helpers that at every point in your life may there be someone who can arise genuinely and sincerely I've taught you in discussing destiny helpers let me do a one minute recap I have taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers let me run through them very quickly number one they first are called divine connectors they do not have the solution to your challenges but they know who has that solution and they always are bridges for instance the slave girl connecting Naaman to Elisha Divine connectors do not have the power to solve your problem, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. And statistics tells us that everybody is maximum of four people away from where your solutions are. No matter how serious that problem is, four people strategically arranged will connect you and your solution. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers, men of influence. These are men who have the credibility, they have the track record, they have the ears of the territory. Their endorsement about you and their speaking over you can rewrite age-long narratives in a moment. One person can sign a signature and say, truly, this man is supposed to go to prison, but at my influence, I write something and that's it can I tell you God still works with men no? and there are men who are gatekeepers whether they are believers or not I've told you that there are gatekeepers you don't cast away God grants you favor to be able to pass through them some of you have been grounded at this point afflictions have remained indefinite in your life because you do not understand the power of destiny relationships the power of destiny helpers men of influence one person his signature can give you a job his signature can veto whatever limitation and grant you access everything you see on earth is controlled by men behind every system is a man and that man has a will he has an emotion even if he's the unrighteous judge that was in Luke 18 a man who does not fear God nor regard men that's a dangerous man may you never meet such a man in your life I say may you never meet such a man in your life a man that does not fear God and does not regard men you can't talk to him about God you can't bribe you can't do anything you're in trouble does not fear God does not regard men but the Bible says a weak woman came and used a strategy to weary that man away until he avenged her adversaries there is always a man behind every system on earth and let me tell you when God wants to help you he gives you access to great men don't insult great men don't insult rich men don't insult people who have paid the price to rise to certain positions rather obtain wisdom by God and say that God should strategically position you Joseph you need Pharaoh to manifest your destiny Daniel you need Darius you need Nebuchadnezzar to manifest your destiny and these are systems and people who God himself recognizes are we together now number three you need gifted men I'm teaching I'm just doing a quick recap on destiny helpers to buttress point four you need gifted men especially for many of us here who are businessmen or even men in ministry one gifted person can save you financial leakages one gifted person can bring efficiency to your life beyond your imagination the best corporations in the world sometimes are behind them are a few intelligent people who are making global impact redefining civilization the whole corporation is sharing the glory but the truth is that the brains behind them may not be more than four or five gifted men finally and maybe not most importantly but more importantly burden bearers 
I told you that the assignment, burden bearers are not after your titles. They are not after whoever or whatever you are. They are after you as a person. Burden bearers may not be able to move you forward, but they have an assignment to stop you from going back. These are men who will cry with you. These are people who will see your nakedness and still cover you and cry with you. May God send burden bearers to your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. So the charge here is to build godly relationships and to make meaningful contributions within the spiritual family that you find yourself. You are in koinonia here. Make, I'm not talking of finances. Finance is about the least contribution you can make. Your prayer, your participation, that through your life someone is loving Jesus, through your life someone is encouraged, someone who would have left the things of God is now drawn back through your life. Hallelujah. Can I give you the last? 